Hello there and welcome to my channel. The Ninja got a bunch of changes with patch 5.1 and I've had a bit of time over the past few weeks to try it out in various content ranging from old extremes to dungeons and raiding. And likewise, as someone who has played the Ninja pretty extensively in the past since the Realm Reborn, I have a few thoughts on what's going on so let's get right into it. To say that the Ninja changes have had a mixed reaction from the community would be a dramatic understatement to say the least. Some people love the mechanic changes, whereas some say that it is the reason that they are now quitting Ninja and moving on to other DPS like the Samurai. Some say that tr the trick attack changes have led to the end of the Ninja's days as being a desirable raid DPS worth taking. Little to say, talking to my friends and various experts in the community has led to a very torn viewpoint. This video is going to be based off of my own opinions and my own thoughts on this going forward. So likewise, do I know everything? No. But you know what, I do think that after years of playing the ninja that I can shed a little bit of insight on it. So I'm going to break this into a few sections. First, biggest change in a host of massive sweeping changes is an overhaul to the entire ninjutsu system. For each mudra, ten, chi, and jin, their duration is now 6 seconds, up from 5, and it now has a charge system where it can hold a maximum of 2 charges that come back every 20 seconds. This is very different from before where the 2 charge mechanic used to be on our ability called kasatsu. But we are going to circle around and talk about Kusatsu in a short bit. But probably an even bigger change that shook a lot of long-term ninja players, including myself, was that now Mudra are on the global cooldown instead of off of it. This means that you can no longer weave a ninjutsu like Raiton or Katon, but in between your rotations, something that me and many other ninja used to do all the time. In essence, this is, in my opinion, somewhat slowed down the pace of ninja's gameplay. I know a lot of people will argue that the difference is so small, but for me, myself, it is really something that I did notice when I started playing the ninja after patch 5.1. I noticed myself mid-rotation trying to continue that rotation, and mid-rotation try and weave in a right on, and honestly it got to the point where it was a little clunky feeling and I did notice myself dragging a little bit in the rotation. But that being said, let's continue onwards. Ninjutsu. The ability ninjutsu itself is now on the global cooldown as well, just propagating that global cooldown effect. Now I mentioned Kasatsu losing its charges before. It no longer impacts the mudra charges at all, it simply overlays your mudras with well, for all intents and purposes, they look the exact same as the other mudras, but this is a separate distinct set that we're going to call Enhanced Charge of the Mudras. Honestly, I think it'd be nice if they had like a red icon or like a red background of the icon to indicate that they're different, but I digress. This makes them able to execute the Enhanced Mudra abilities Goku Mekyaku and Hyoshi Ranryu, or better known as the Super Painful Single Target and AoE abilities. So Kasatsu is now not on double charged, but a single charge that you can use on a 60 second cooldown timer, allowing you to pair this with Trick Attack. So that's nice, and you're gonna really want to cram in a Hyoshi Ranryo in each Trick Attack that you do. The ninja ability Moisei that would convert one stack of Soitan into Ninki is up from 40 to 50, which now means that this will actually give you a full charge of a Ninki ability with the new Ninki changes. Those I will get into a little later because that also re received a very huge overhaul. The Moisei should no longer be considered a meme. Lastly, before we wrap up the section on ninjutsu, all of the ninjas in ninjutsu have been significantly dramatically buffed in damage other than Hoiton because that's just your attack speed buff. Like Suiton is up from 130 potency to 600. Yeah, you heard that right. A freaking 470 potency buff. What? <laughs> And Raiton has been up from 400 to 800, Gokamekaku has been up from 400 to 750, and Hyosha Ranryu has been literally doubled from 600 to 1200. And likewise, you can check all the changes on the screen right now because they're basically, if it did damage before, it's gonna do a lot more. So basically, all of your damaging ninjutsu hits far, far, far harder than it did before. And so now I want to talk about Trick Attack because I think that that's the other really big change that has the most talk around it and I really want to suss this one out in good detail because this is something that a lot of people are talking about and a lot of people are saying that this has destroyed the ninja. This Trick Attack that we now have increases the damages on a target by 5% for 15 seconds, whereas it used to be 10% for 10 seconds, meaning in practice people should be able to fit in 2 more global cooldowns at 6 global cooldowns into Trick Attack, whereas before they could only take it 
technically fit in about four. What does this mean in practice is the question. Well, let's look at FF logs and get the actual numbers. Because I see a lot of Doom saying going about Ninja being ruined, destroyed, subpar, bad pick, and the rest, and like looking at numbers some days. So pulling up the highest top groups for patch 5.0 and 5.1 at random, I see Ninja's trick attack that applies the vulnerability up debuff onto a target, and it added a whopping 1760.9 damage specifically in V-Raid DPS, so that's pretty significant for sure. So now let's pull up a patch 5.1 top group. Vulnerability up from Trick Attack here did a very tremendously good 1334.3 added rain damage. So taking these numbers, the difference is 426.6 DPS, or in other words, Trick Attack in patch 5.1 deals from these two numbers approximately 75.77% of the damage that it used to do in patch 5.0. So is the nerf earth shattering? No, trick attack is still completely bonkers and is still to this day an extremely consistent and very powerful raid buff. And to give you a kind of a perspective on how bonkers it is, if we look at the dancer from this page, which is in another top raid group, we see that their 5% buff that they're adding by having a dance partner is 767.1. We see that their Devilment buff is adding 521.8, and then we see that their group-wide buff is going to add 919.9 .9 DPS, which adds up to 2208.8. Which, keep in mind, is that really that much higher than the Ninja, considering how much more the Ninja brings, and that the Dancer is really utility-oriented in and of itself? I don't know, I'd personally say the Trick Attack's still really good. But I actually want to do a little bit more digging now from here, looking at Ninja as a whole from patch 5.0 to 5.1. And I'm going to look at like FF logs considering the 75th percentile, which is still extremely, extremely good players that definitely know what they're doing. And so we're looking at the Titan a Savage fight. And so patch 5.0 Ninja is the number 5th top DPS at 13,599.70 with a max of 14,642.3. Now patch 5.1 ninja is the number 5 top DPS, 13,746.24 DPS with a maximum of 15,150.55. So essentially has ninja been ruined? Far from it. In fact, from this data from FF logs, these actual numbers that we see right now, it looks like ninja's doing on average more damage than it was doing before. Both the DPS and the max DPS numbers are a little higher than before, not so much higher that the ninja is now suddenly busted. And so when I see people say that this change completely destroyed the ninja, that is proven, provably false. So okay, now with that tangent on DPS and ninja being destroyed because trick attack was nerfed has been put to bed. Let's get back to the rest of the changes because with Ninja, oh no, we are not done yet at all. Let's talk about the Ninki changes. First thing is that all of the Ninki abilities now cost 50. The gauge is still at 100 max though, and that is nice to me as a quality of life increase because this allows for some breathing room in which it's something that I appreciate because few things were as frantic as being at 80 or above gauge and needing to mash the key and just get it out there however you could. However, this comes with some changes to the passive of how you're going to regenerate Ninki as Sheik Shuhiku has been decreased from 6 to 5 per ability, and Shuhiku 2 has an increase to the Ninki change, been changed from 8 to 10 when you land any weapon skill or successfully complete any combo to leading Shadow Fang, or basically whenever you complete a combo, it's just going to add 10 instead of 8 now. So is the Ninki passive change really that much different? Not really. Not at least in practice for me. But this did, however, come at the cost of both Babakara and Hellfrog Medium having their potency nerfed significantly. Hellfrog Medium is now down from 400 potency to 200 potency. Babakara is, is down to 300 potency from 500, so that does sting a little bit in the damage department. But in practice, I feel like I'm being allowed to weave in both Babakara and Hellfrog Medium far more often than I was before, which off global cooldown ability weaving is a very powerful thing. So in my mind, I'd actually say that this is a net gain for sure in terms of how speedy and flowing the ninja feels in its rotation. Bunshin now lasts a total of 30 seconds up for 15 and adds one more ninki to the ninki gauge for a total of 5 per attack. The shadow um, this ability augments your attacks with an additional tacked on potency buff per attack of 200 for melee range and then 100 for ranged over 5 attacks. So now this actually does have an indicator of quality of life, uh, kind of just saying how many stacks do you have of the augmented attacks. Theoretically that should be nice quality of life, in practice I don't really 
need to monitor that because I know that I'm gonna have to stuff in all these attacks in a set period of time. And it's not like I'm gonna suddenly stop my global cooldown rotation in order to like line it up with some other raid buff later because it's just like your potency decrease from doing that would be way higher, but you get what I'm saying. And now let's talk about the Tenchi Jin ability, which is a significant rework in and of itself. And it now converts each mudra, so your Tenchi and Jin, into a ninjutsu action, and basically, in my opinion, acts like a ninjutsu slot machine where you choose the best ninjutsu at that current time. It's a very rapid pace at only 6 seconds duration, so pick and choose wisely and quickly. But overall, I really do like this change and it feels really cool to me because it's just like now those ninjutsu that you usually have to like cast all those things for just instant and you like rapid fire them off. I really am a fan myself. But all that being said, we are still not done. We have a few more miscellaneous changes that aren't really tied into a system. So first off, Dream Within a Dream got a decent quality of life buff where the duration of when you could cast Assassinate is being increased by 5 seconds to 15 seconds. Likewise, I believe that this is to line up with the new enhanced 15 second trick attack window better than 10 seconds now. And then our basic combo finishers, Armor Crush and ULA and Edge, got 20 potency buff each for a total of Armor Crush hitting 460 total potency from the flank, and Aeolian Edge is up to 480 from the target's rear. Mug recast time has been lowered to 110 seconds from 120 seconds, probably in reality to help prevent rotation drift and sync in with Trick Attack better, because you aren't going to normally cast Mug immediately when you do Trick Attack, so you'd have a little bit of drift over time. And to cap off all the changes, Shadow Fang has been overhauled to basically be a new skill if I want to be completely honest for you. Yeah, it's a damage over time effect, but it's really different. So now it's no longer a combo action, and now it's its own unique skill independent of anything else on its own cooldown timer. It has increased base potency from 100 to 200. The damage over time effect now has been increased from 70 to 90 potency as well with a duration of 30 seconds. So that is going to total to 900 potency from damage over time effect. And then add the 200 onto that 900. You're going to have that at a total of 1,100 potency of damage. So that is quite huge for a single button. And before I actually leave this, because when I was talking to some people, they got a little confused on this. When you see the six... I mean 70 second base cooldown timer here in the patch notes. When you actually play the ninja in the game and you have Hoiton up, it actually has the cooldown lowered by 10 seconds. So don't worry about it not lining up with trick attack. Yeah, you don't have like a tiny bit of time. Actually with skill speed, yeah, the cooldown goes down a bit. So it kind of prevents drift, but not... It. I digress, sorry, the tangent, random tangent. But basically, it lines up with Trick Attack, don't worry about it being 70 seconds, you don't have that rotational drift. But overall, how do I feel with these changes? I feel torn. I have talked to people that main and play Ninja, like, exclusively, and seen what they have had to say, and some really love it, and some really hate it. For me personally, the changes to Trick Attack don't scare me, the numbers I went over before show that Ninja is still more than fine, Trick Attack is still extremely potent raid utility, and is going nowhere. Ninjutsu changes make me personally feel like uh, Ninja has slowed down a lot, if I'm being honest. Is it slow? No. But I feel like it has slowed down relative to before. I don't like being negative here, but I did used to really like double weaving right on between global cooldowns. Triple Mudra would result in a clip for sure, like if you were trying to get on Doton or refresh your attack speed buff, yeah you'd have real issues, but double weaving really was far from out of the question. The ninjutsu now however are very powerful, the potency buffs are undeniable and really do make up for them now being on the global cooldown and feeling slower. Ninjutsu are also up extremely frequently and I really do like having the charges up for them every 20 seconds on the Mudra themselves. It's very quick and in fights like Hades with many phase transitions you really really quickly notice that hey you have a lot more ninjutsu up ridiculously often than you expected at first. Actually with that being said I want to say that the ninjutsu are undeniably more a part of your core kit than ever and they feel like I, I at least to me I feel like they are a much more often and that you are casting them a lot more often. It might be because they're on the global cooldown instead of just something that you're secondary. But yeah, there's no denying that at this point that yeah, they are definitely very prominent in your kit. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Some people love it, some people hate it. I myself feel kind of neutral, if I'm being really honest. But 
The question that a lot of people ask is, is the ninja still fast? Totally, I hands down am going to recommend the ninja to anyone wanting a lower global cooldown and want to play a fast character. With the changes to Ninki, you are now going to be weaving in Babakara and Hellfrog Medium, spamming in Jitsu and Tenchi Jin and going all over the place for sure. In fact, one thing that I even noticed myself when I was like starting out is that I'd make a lot of mistakes on the ninja where I would actually like queue in one of the mudras and because it was just so fast paced and I was not used to the adjustment uh, because I I don't normally play ninja all the time exclusively so the change from pace I did notice that I was miscuing actions and then I was like oh darn it that wasn't what I meant to do but to kind of give you a paint a picture of and how quick it goes you have charges of ninjutsu coming up when you have over 50 ninki and need to dispose of that while you need to line up your next trick attack window all the while weaving in global cooldowns and bigger attacks like Tenchi Jin meanwhile you need to actually be casting your ninjutsu on the global cooldown timer then you also have to weave in mug you have to weave in assassinate you have to weave in dream within a dream and yeah I definitely can say that the ninja is still pretty darn fast for sure but even at the end of recording this video, I do find myself frustrated at some aspects, or some aspects I wish were a little bit more fleshed out. It might seem like a minor grievance, but I find the ninja's basic rotation from spinning edge into gust slash that can only branch off into either a little Aeolian edge with a meager 20 potency difference between them. We are honestly at the point where the ninja's most basic rotation is something that I find very, very bland for a DPS job. It's something akin to the warrior where you have a 1-2-3 rotation that you once in a while, every 30 seconds or so, press 1-2 and then 4 instead of 3. This does not add much enjoyment in my experience. We're at the point where I can see more casual players actively not using Aeolian Edge and taking the 20 points he hit in general and just spamming Armor Crush as that extends the Hoiton duration. Completely for going Aeolian Edge completely. In fact, let's talk a little bit about that basic rotation, massage that a bit. In terms of positionals, of all the melee DPS, I find the ninja to be the absolute most relaxed because of this, and I find it even more so this patch. I don't really know why, it might just be because like you are on the global cooldown with your ninjutsu, but it, it is fast, but 99.9% .9 of the time, in my experience, you're going to just plant yourself behind the enemy and then every 30 seconds flank them, just to extend the duration of your attack speed buff. The main challenge behind the ninja in my experience is the speed at this point and trying not to accidentally queue up the wrong mudra when planning to execute a ninjutsu and just keeping up with all of the various parts of the kit flowing in because you have all those charges flowing and you have the Bavakar coming in and so that being said do I like the speed? Yeah I totally do love that aspect of the ninja. So by the ninjutsu being on the global cooldown it does feel fast. I feel some melee DPS like the Monk are very positioning oriented that the ninja really has taken a lot of the difficulty of positioning and has instead taken it and placed it into ninjutsu system. Of course, your personal preference and playstyle will dictate if this is something that you're really into or not. For me, I personally do enjoy the ninja for sure and I still do come patch 5.1. It is very unique to the from the other melee DPS and it offers its own spice and variety that is enjoyable. I'd say that it is one of the fastest classes in the entire game, certainly not the most mechanically demanding or rotation intensive like Monk or Summoner, but there is no denying that it is fast, fast, fast. In fact, when it comes to new players coming to the game, when they are worried about a longer global cooldown of 2.5 seconds, the ninja is easily the first class that comes to my mind as something that I want to recommend to them. And I personally think that's a great thing and that that is something that this game has always had a place for. So in my opinion, if you want me to ask if the 5.1 rework was a good thing that made it more fun, because numbers wise, it's stable. In my opinion, Sort of. I don't like not being able to weave in Wariton. I do like casting Bavakar more often. I don't like Shadow Fang just being its own unique dot. And our rotation being even more 1, 2, 3 than ever is really bland. But I do like casting Ninjutsu more often. Regardless though, when I want to play something fast, a ninja is something that I really do enjoy and can recommend to people for sure. Well, that is all for this video and I hope that you liked it and if you want to help support me and like help me a lot then any likes comments and subscribes really go a tremendously long way and are very appreciated anyhow that is all for this video and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below because i actually do like read all the comments and i am genuinely curious what everyone thinks anyhow take care and have a great one